Okay, now that we've gone ahead and completed the setup of our RTN 66U router, we're going to go ahead and actually start the setup process to get us connected to the actual internet, as well as enable and set up our actual wireless enabled uh, SSIDs or networks so that we can go ahead and have any of our Wi-Fi enabled devices be able to connect to the internet as well. So first and foremost, we've gone ahead and already covered the actual part of physically connecting your internet service provider connection to the WAN port, as well as covering the connection options that are available in terms of LAN port to your, either your desktop or your notebook. As we previously noted, no software is required for the setup process. This is entirely web-based, whether you're actually on a notebook, a tablet, a smartphone, or a Windows-enabled PC, or actually for that matter, any other operating system. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and proceed with going through a wired setup configuration and we'll be covering a wireless setup configuration under a, another video. So at this point, now that we've gone ahead and completed um, our physical connection from the RTN 66U to the network port here on our D53S notebook, we're going to go ahead and take a look here at the network icon. Now this network icon is letting us know that there's currently no internet access. So our next step is to verify and actually see if our router is actually being seen by the operating system, uh, which we can easily do by going to actually the network neighborhood and from there verifying that the actual router is being identified under plug and play. Now this isn't normally required as part of the setup process, but this is just a little bit additional information if you want to do a quick confirmation. At this point, all we need to do is actually launch one of the supported browsers to actually launch the setup process. From here, I'm going to be using Internet Explorer 64-bit, but current major browsers on the market are also fully supported, whether that be Google Chrome, Opera, or Mozilla. So let's go ahead and open up Internet Explorer. At this point, we can see that our HTTP takeover process has gone ahead and kicked into effect, and we have been launched into the RTN 66U setup process. So from here, all we need to do is press next. Now, at this point, the router is asking us to go ahead and define an administrator password for the actual router's admin login. Uh, this is to go ahead and allow us access to the administrator functionality as well as controlling the functions and features of the RTN 66U. This is independent from the password that you're going to be creating for your wireless networks. Now, as a general rule of thumb, we always advocate strong password usage, but for the t process of this setup video, I'm going to be utilizing a basic password and I'm actually going to be utilizing admin. But I will be showing you once we're connected to the internet how to quickly and easily generate random passwords and then how to go ahead and change those under the RTN 66U's admin console. Okay, now that we've gone ahead and entered that in, the RTN 66U has gone ahead and completed a detection of our internet service provider's uh, connection, and it's gone ahead and defined those parameters. At this point, it's asking us to go ahead and define information that's relevant to our wireless network name, or as what's referred to as the SSID information. Now, I strongly recommend that you notate the actual SSDI information um, based on the actual name of the router, as well as the actual frequency of operation. This makes it very easy that on whatever device you're looking at, you know which router you're connecting to and at which frequency slash band. So for the 2.4 gigahertz, I'm going to go ahead and call this my 66U. 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, for the password, once again, we're going to use the same uh, implementation that we use for the administrator password. I'm going to go with a basic password, uh, but we're going to change this after the fact. So I'm going to use ASUS FTW123. And for the 5 gigahertz, it's going to be 66U, 5 gigahertz, and then same thing. We're going to click apply. This information will then be stored in the router to enable our actual wireless network ID. Now at this point, if you had already used the password that was safe and secure, you could very easily store this information for future reference or for any type of uh, time that you're going to need information regarding your wireless network SSID. And we can easily store this information by using the snipping tool in the operating system to go ahead and capture this. So we're going to take a quick grab of this and call this wireless settings. From there, we're going to go ahead and click Next. It will let us know that at this time, we could go ahead and search for actually our wireless networks, connect to them by entering in the actual uh, password information that we've defined or the security key that we've defined. Okay, so at this point, technically, we've gone ahead and completed uh, the setup of the RTN 66U, and you can go ahead and proceed and get connected to the internet. At this point, though, we're going to go ahead and verify internet connectivity by utilizing a general homepage. So we're going to go to msn.com. 
as you can see, msn.com loaded up without any issues, so we're good to go. Now, the next step is actually going to be verify the functionality and the performance. So what we're going to go ahead and do is actually go to speed test. Now, what I would generally recommend is you would want to find out what is the rating of internet connectivity in terms of the speed that you're currently paying for from your internet service provider. So for instance, if let's say we go to Comcast and we were to take a look at uh, their cable offers, we can see that they break their actual internet service provider speeds into uh, rating, uh, ratings. So we're gonna go ahead and go to internet and we can see here that they have different ratings. So from 1.5 megabits all up to 105 megabits. So if you happen to know that information, you're gonna to wanna to compare this to whatever information is defined by the speed test. Now here in our offices, we're generally getting somewhere between about 30 megabits uh, up and 30 megabits down to 40 megabits up and 40 megabits down, depending actually on our network load across the day. So at this point, what we're gonna go ahead and do is uh, just run a quick speed test and check that everything is working optimally in terms of the performance for RTN66U and the wired connection that we've gone ahead and defined. So we can see here, we have a very solid connection of a 34 megabits down. And uh, about 36 megabits up. So that's very solid. I generally recommend that you run it twice. From there, you wanna go ahead and do the same thing and capture those settings so that you have them stored to compare so that later on, if you run into any issues relative to uh, diminished performance or you feel like the system's not running as fast as it was, you can make a comparison and see if you're seeing any type of anomalies. Okay, now that we've gone ahead and completed the speed test, we're actually gonna to wanna to go to pingtest.net. Now for pingtest.net, this is gonna allow us to go ahead and measure a different characteristic. So it's going to let us check ping and jitter and the overall line quality. So this is gonna be important once again to verify that your setup process has gone through without any issues and that you're getting a solid, reliable connection from the RTN66U on whatever device that you've gone ahead and connected with. Now generally keep in mind that you do want to try to pick the closest server so that you can have the optimal performance results because of course selecting a server from a further location is going to diminish the results of the test. Okay, so overall we've completed uh, with a lane quality of A with the ping being 11 milliseconds and the jitter being five milliseconds. So this is overall exactly what we were looking for. And once again, generally you would wanna run this twice to make sure that you have a consistent result. And from there, the next step for us is to actually go ahead and go through and re configure the password information for our administrator logon, as well as the password information for our wireless networks uh, to a more secure and safe password. So this is going to be a very easy process. Uh, what I generally would recommend is actually using an online uh, generator. So we're, there's a couple of different, uh, different ones out there. So we're going to go and uh, type into a search engine, PC tools, password. And we should be taken to, as we can see here, our random password generator. So we're going to need two passwords. I generally recommend a length of 12 characters, uh, including punctuation and with no repetition. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and generate those passwords. So we now have two safe and secure randomly generated passwords. So we're gonna go ahead and select the first one, copy it, and head back over to the actual RTN66U's admin console. At this point, it's very easy. We're just gonna to go to administration. We're gonna to go to system, and we're gonna enter in the new password. At that point, we're also gonna go ahead and change the time zone to the correct time zone for your location. 
This will go ahead and take a moment to take effect, but from there, you will now have a safe and secure password for the administrator logon. Now the next step will actually be to go ahead and go back over to our randomly generated passwords. Select the second one because we're gonna go ahead and update the password information for our wireless networks. So we're gonna head back over to the network map. Once we head over to the network map, all we're gonna need to do is go to the actual security settings, which we're clicking on the actual security tab. We then can go ahead and select 2.4 or 5 gigahertz and replace that. From there, I'm also gonna go ahead and change this to the more optimal security protocol of WPA2. And we have now successfully updated the security password information for our 2.4 gigahertz band. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the five gigahertz band. With that completed, you have now successfully set up your RTN66U so that you now have a safe and secure administrator logon, a safe and secure set of wireless networks, and from there also successfully connected to the internet. This concludes the overall overview and setup of the RTN66U router.